Peckhead, it's Mr. Fly here, hope you're well. And welcome to another bike review here on the channel. Something very, very special for you today. If you've uh, watched many of my videos in the past, you'll know that at heart, I'm a retro bike man. And today, I'm riding what could be regarded as the king of the retros. It's a bike that's a bit of a rarity. It's been quite hard for me to get hold of, and I'm feeling privileged to ride it. This is the brand new Norton Commando 961 SP. Now the uh, SP stands for sport, which means this is the more upright machine. They also make a calf racer version. But this is the one that's of interest to me. So uh, stick around and stay tuned. I'll tell you what I think of this bike. All right, so how lucky am I then to be riding a Norton? It's not the first ever Norton I've ridden. Uh, I have ridden a very special Norton in the past. In fact, I rode uh, the Norton Commando 961 Street uh, about three years ago. It was actually owned by Henry Cole. Do you remember that bike? They took the old 961 Commando from old Norton. Uh, they did some CAD design, cardboard-aided design on it. Added a different seat, different light cowling and so on. And just made it look a little bit different. And uh, they showed it to Stuart Garner, of which we'll say no more. And uh, he liked it so much, Old Norton made 50 of them and sold them. And anyway, I rode that bike, it was the prototype bike, and I absolutely loved it. Of course, wine forward three years, and an awful lot has changed at Norton, we won't get into that, but uh, now the company has a spanking new fancy uh, factory in Solihull. It's owned by a big uh, conglomerate, TVS, who are pumping loads of money into it, and they're basically making the, uh, the company great again. They've come back with a 961, which is hugely improved, with lots more quality parts than it ever had before, and, uh, well, it is a beautiful looking thing. So uh, before we get on to what it's like to ride, let's take a little look at this bike and some of the lovely trinkets on it. All right, I think this is such a lovely looking motorcycle. It's worth lingering a little bit over some of the details, isn't it? Let's start at the very front, of course. First thing that caught my eye in the sunshine here, this beautiful carbon mudguard. Absolutely lovely fit and finish on that, a nice piece of work. Uh, you can spot the Olin suspension. It's got amazing cycle parts on here and Brembo brakes. But what, again, leaps out to me here is when you look at this little part here, just the machining on here, absolutely uh, beautifully, beautifully made. Uh, something I'm not so keen on, although I, I love the idea, is these, these chrome wheels wheels look they look lovely the chrome uh, with the overall bike but when you look closely you can see there's some marks on here I don't know if you can see that on the on the phone camera right quite a lot on here I thought this was dirt and I thought I'll just wipe that off but actually no this is tarnishing look on there which is really disappointing uh, you'd think a bike that's uh, you know basically brand new wouldn't have tarnished so that's a little bit disappointing uh, coming down to the engine again love these engine cases and the polished cases there no tarnishing there that looks absolutely lovely I love the fact you've got Brembo detail here the um, pedals and oh, sorry the pegs the foot pegs are all nicely uh, machined oddly they fold up and stay up they're not on a spring that's caught me out a few times uh, but there's lots of little details on this that are lovely uh, for example look at this seat lovely upholstered of course but just the way that they've got Norton stitch in there absolutely beautiful uh, nice pipes as well very loud as you heard uh, remains to be seen whether they'll be too loud something a little bit disappointed by all bog standard um, indicators and lights on here these aren't LED or anything these are all just normal filament bulbs so they just look a bit naff on a premium bike I think uh, but small point coming around this side again beautifully finished engine cases with that big N for Norton on and that uh, lovely uh, air-cooled twin motor as well just looks superb doesn't it uh, coming up to, uh, around the front here headlight is all very nice and the indicator is there again just a bit plastically and cheap looking uh, and again these are LED or halogen they're not uh, modern day sorry they're not LED these are just the bog standard halogen lights uh, coming up to the handlebars we've got uh, Really nice um, brake lever and clutch lever on here. These are Brembo, and we've got a Brembo master cylinder, uh, which is a great move. Don't like these piss pot. These are Brembo ones as well, but the piss pot uh, reservoirs, but they're on so many bikes these days. Um, nice, simple instrument cluster. We'll talk more about that later. Uh, what else to say? Mirrors, not to my taste. I think I'll go bar end. They're a bit Mickey Mouse to me. But yeah, overall, a beautiful looking machine. And uh, yeah, yeah, really do like that. I could look at that all day long. That is like a proper automotive work of art isn't it there's something about it that kind of tugs at the heartstrings okay so uh, that's the uh, Norton 961 Commando SP then what she looks like there's no doubt it's a lovely looking thing but what she looks like is only half the battle isn't it what's it ride like that's the thing now you've got to bear in mind this bike comes in at uh, around about 18 grand 
wrong it's actually closer to 16 grand than uh, 18 sorry about that my error where were we gosh there's so many traffic lights around these days at least on a bike you can get to the front of the queue actually while i'm sat here it's a good point to show you that i can get my feet flat flat on the deck look nice and low uh, not much, I've got a little bit of a bend in my leg here, but I'm flat footing this on the deck So it feels actually it feels relatively light and uh, you can certainly get your feet firmly planted I'm five foot eight with a 32 inch leg uh, and it's perfect size for me All right, come on lights. Let's ride this thing Come on mate. We've been waiting here for some time a little bit of pace maybe We've got batteries running out SD cards filling up Thank you very much. Okay, so finally we get to ride the bike. Couple of things that strike me immediately when you jump on the 961. That is number one, the noise. This is a loud bike. It's not as loud as the Henry Cole Street version that I rode, that's for sure, because that had some special pipes on. This has got the standard pipes on that it comes without the factory, but it still is very, very loud. How on earth they get this through the uh, the regulations I don't know with that pipe on but anyway it's loud that's the first thing that strikes you next thing that strikes me is the amount of vibration on this bike now some people call that character don't they but uh, for me this has just got a bit too much of that there's a load of vibration through the seat not so much through the uh, handlebar grips not so much through the pegs but there's a load through the seat it's there all the time and again vibration through the mirrors I don't like these mirrors they're the stalky Mickey Mouse type uh, and they're vibrating away yes I can see behind me it's not a big deal but they are vibrating and that's just something that uh, normally I put down as a black mark against the bike so my very first thought was having ridden this now for uh, I've only been riding this for about half an hour before I turn the cameras on is that it feels very old school so it's like in the same way as for example if you compared a Royal Enfield Interceptor to a Triumph Speed Twin hello sir hello sir they're on proper bikes then uh, you would say that the Interceptor felt old school. Now maybe by saying that you're just being polite and actually saying it feels a bit rough. I don't know, it's got more character for sure. And I hesitate to say that an 18 grand bike, 16,000 pounds, laden with all the uh, top quality components that this has got, feels rough. But if I'm being brutally honest, it does feel rough. I love that sound, but I think it might get wearing after a while and those vibes well instant turn off I'm afraid anyway let's ignore that bit for now what about the comfort on it well ignoring that vibration the seating position is quite interesting for a retro bike I'm hoping you can see on my 360 camera my legs are relatively sportily tucked up nothing unusual there but I'm actually leaning forward quite a long way on this bike my back is not upright I find it quite uncomfortable actually it's not, it's not a sports bike, wristy, you know, but there is some weight on my wrists, which I wasn't expecting on a naked retro. If you jump on a Triumph, or indeed the Enfield Interceptor that we just talked about, or the Kawasaki Z900 RS, you're sitting in comfort, upright. This one, it's got a more of a sporty camp forward. It, that might suit you? I don't know, but certainly I don't think it's going to be as comfortable as those other bikes on a longer run. If you're just going to the local uh, cafe, or to the pub and it's a short run no problem at all it's not uncomfortable I'm just pointing out it's not as comfortable as some of those other bikes what an absolutely beautiful day to be out on a beautiful bike eh? now what I do love about the Norton of course is all the heritage that comes with it the fact that it's a properly British bike I, I love British bikes generally and uh, I love the idea of Norton being back in business I'm a little bit uh, disappointed that they have stated, I think, that they're not going to be a mass market producer of motorcycles. They're going to be sort of a niche brand, which is a bit of a shame. And in fact, I believe that each one of these bikes, because they produce so small, actually has to go through single vehicle approval. I may be wrong there, but they're not actually homologated like the big manufacturers are, where they can just knock out bikes and make as many as they like. They've, they'll be limited in the numbers they can make. But also at the moment, that perhaps suits them because there may be the production facilities aren't quite ramped up. I don't know. So just something of interest I read somewhere I'm not quite sure the details but something to bear in mind all right slightly faster bit of road then let's see what she's like here okay it's only a 50 limit but up to 50 is fine 
Uh, I wouldn't describe it as swift by any means. This is not a hugely powerful bike. In fact, this might be an opportune time to take me, for me to take you through the specs on the machine. Okay, let's talk specs then, and let's start off with this engine, which is, of course, air-cooled and Norton's own unit. Uh, we've seen this for a while, but it does look lovely, isn't it, in the frame? We've said that already. It's 961cc parallel twin, allied to a five-speed uh, five gearbox. Uh, 77 brake horsepower and 59.7 foot-pounds of torque, so uh, the numbers aren't going to break any records. Braking on the front is taken care of by two 320mm discs and these Brembo four-pot calipers. At the rear, we've got a single 240mm disc and a single single pot Brembo caliper. Quite hard to see down there, but uh, yeah, the disc is mounted on the opposite side to usual. Suspension at the front taken care of by these massive 43mm upside down Olin's forks, fully adjustable. And at the back, we've got these twin Olin's units, which again are fully adjustable. This lovely seat is mounted 810mm high. Weight of the Norton is 230 kilograms dry, so it's not a lightweight by any means, but I have to say it doesn't feel heavy when you're riding it. It's uh, I was going to say it's easy to live with, but actually the turning circle on it is like a jumbo jet, so I'll take that back, but it's not, uh, it's not hard to live with from a weight point of view. This classically shaped Norton fuel tank carries 15 litres of fuel. Electronics wise, there's nothing doing other than ABS, we can see the ABS ring, it doesn't even have traction control, but uh, really, for a bike of this sort of performance, that's fine with me. And then the price of the bike, this one, the SP, is 16,499. They also make a CAF racer version for 500 pounds more. Um, and for comparison purposes, a Moto Guzzi V7 has similar performance, but half the price. A Speed Twin 1200 is 11,795. So five grand less for the Speed Twin with more power. Last but not least, which is why we're going over the spec sheet, is the colors these are available in is basically the silver or the black. Personally, I'd take the black. I think it looks absolutely stonking. So welcome back aboard just as I approached yet more temporary traffic lights. I'm not complaining about temporary traffic lights because they are fixing potholes which have been blighting the roads this year. So I'm glad to see that's happening. So good on them is all I can say. Anyway, so back on the bike then. Yeah, so the spec on paper isn't mind blowing. And uh, well, other than the uh, the cycle parts, of course, which are very high spec, the, the Olins and the Brembos, etc. But how does all that translate to how she rides? Well, what can I say? It doesn't feel particularly quick. Uh, it is, you know, it is a 900cc, over 900cc motor, so you'd expect it to be, have a bit of oomph, but it's got nowhere near the oomph, for example, that the uh, Kawasaki Z900 RS has, albeit that's a four cylinder, so a difficult, you know, difficult comparison, but that feels so much more sprightly than this. This, really, the performance this is more comparable with things like the uh, Triumph Speed Twin 900, the former Street Twin, and the things like the Moto Guzzi V7. So think of this bike more like that in terms of performance and you won't be far off. So these slightly faster speeds, I'm doing 50 now. The vibrations have got more high frequency. They're less noticeable through the seat, more noticeable through the bars now. You definitely know you're on a motorbike and it does feel old school. If you like that sort of thing, that might suit you. So don't let me put you off this bike because of that. If it doesn't suit me, it might suit you. And also the vibration through the mirrors has subsided a bit now at these faster speeds, so that's, that's good news. When we get under some more twisties, we'll uh, look at the handling a bit more. What am I looking at here in terms of instrumentation? So, well, lovely dials, I have to say. I do love a speedo and an RPM gauge, that's it. They're beautifully simple. They're reminiscent of old school dials. I like that, no complaints there. Except one little thing. <laughs> there is a little LCD here that has an Odo and your time and so on here. But what it doesn't have is a fuel gauge. Now that is a pet hate of mine. Again, yes, you can look in the tank, which is what I had to do, and see that there is fuel in there, and there is fuel in there. And I'm sure one of the idiot lights is a low fuel gauge, so, you know, you can get away with that, and you can reset the Odo and work out how many miles you've got to go. But not having a fuel gauge on a modern bike, to my mind, that's a black mark as well, I'm afraid. The bike is uber simple, no electronics to speak of other than ABS, so heads very simple switch gear on here. I've already mentioned I don't much like it, it just feels trumpery to me. So let's not dwell on that, but it is simple to operate and you can feel it through your gloves, so it, it, that's that's fair enough. I think when, when manufacturers come out with bikes that are in the kind of premium segment, which this is, this is up there against things like the Ducati Street Fighter uh, and other bikes like that that are dripping with not only good cycle parts, but quality everywhere. At least the bits you touch have got to be top quality, haven't they? 
and to me that means the switch gear has got to be nice well i'm afraid norton have failed in my mind on that the other thing that i find a little bit disappointing on this is the the clamp at the top here the yoke it's it's uh it's got this sort of matte gray finish it's all right it's perfectly nice it's not particularly low quality it just doesn't look particularly high quality either i would have liked to have seen some polished chrome up there a bit like henry cole had on his street version or a bit like you get on the much cheaper three grand cheaper triumph thruxton which has those lovely polished yokes now again i get these aren't manufactured in big numbers so it's difficult for norton to come out with a bike at a low price that can compete because it doesn't simply have the economies of scale but again it's a little bit disappointing all right let's go down this road in the hope that we can get to some slightly different types of road just to test out the handling a bit more what the suspension is like fancy suspension as you saw from Olin's I find the slow speed on this so jerky gearbox is nice actually feels nice changes gear nice and easily clutch is uh, not too soft not too hard no problems there no quick shifter of course only five gears though which I find strange I think six gears would have been nice and also I do find it very difficult to find neutral now sometimes it's because bikes I'm riding demo bikes are new but this one has done nearly 2,000 miles so you'd think it would have loosened up by now it is lovely to ride down these back lanes it has got a real authentic feel if that's important to you if what you want is nostalgia and that grip back to the good old days then this bike is going to suit you down to the ground I completely get that but for me Feels. The suspension does feel nice actually, there's uh, there's no harsh bumps, it's set up beautifully. These roads are really bumpy, uh, but it's not being transmitted to my backside in a harsh manner. The feel is lovely and the handling is great, absolutely no problems there at all. So Norton have got that spot on and the uh, the only suspension, oh more traffic lights, is definitely, definitely paying dividends there. Goodness me, how many traffic lights have we had today? Incredible. Anyway, what I was going to say is uh, when it comes to old school feeling bikes retro bikes generally i've already said that i'm a big fan of retro bikes I absolutely are i love the looks of this thing i love the fact that it looks like a motorcycle should look and often people say to me given you like old bikes so much or old looking bikes why don't you just buy a classic motorcycle get yourself an original triumph t120 or an old manx norton or something and run that well as much as i love the looks of those bikes the reason i don't do that is i don't like the way they feel and this is based on me having never ridden one <laughs> but i'm guessing or indeed the fact that they break down on a regular basis and need a lot of fettling and nurturing to keep on the road so for me i'd rather have a bike that looks retro but has all the modern accoutrements reliability comfort and so on hence why my garage i've got for example my speed twin looks like a motorbike but it rides you know it looks like an old motorbike but rides exactly like a modern one whereas this one looks like an old motorbike tick good thing but to me it rides like i think an old motorbike would probably ride not in terms of handling that's better the ride quality on this is nice but those vibes through the seat some of the trumpery switch gear it's not quite it's not quite there for me now, I'm really disappointed to be saying these things because I, as I said, I love the idea of the Norton brand and I really wish them the best of luck for making a success out of new Norton and I, and I really hope they do. But I struggle to see why you'd pay 18 grand on this when you can buy those other bikes, the Triumph Thruxton, the Speed Twin, the Kawasaki Z900 RS that are two thirds of the price. Or if you go with bikes that are more com comparable performance like that motor Gutsy V7, or the Speed Twin 900, they're half the price of this. And arguably, right better. So I'm really sorry to be saying that, Norton. And I'm sorry to be saying that to you, because I know so many people watching this review will be keen to see what my thoughts on this are. Don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with the bike. It rides nice, it looks beautiful. All I'm saying is, I expected more. Let me just try this brake set, nothing behind. Oh, the brakes on here fantastic they're the they're not the style lemons on here but they are brembo and they have the uh, brembo master cylinders as you saw it does make them good behind still let's just try the rear 
Yeah, rear is a bit there, like so many bikes are. The other thing actually to say about this bike is the, uh, the amount of engine braking on here is incredible. It doesn't have a slipper clutch, which I'm so used to now. Most, again, new Triumphs and other bikes have slipper clutches, so that if you're hand-fisted, like I am, I'm a rubbish rider, and you dump the clutch suddenly, particularly in a lower gear, you get a lot of engine braking. So I've noticed that a lot in this. I might have been a bit hand-fisted with the clutch, let the uh, lever out a bit quick, and then suddenly I'm slowing right down. So that's something to be aware of. But again, that's what old bikes were like. Twins and singles, lots of compression in the cylinders. As soon as you let out that clutch, if you're going down the box, you're gonna get some, uh, some slowing down. You definitely get that on this. And the other thing that I've noticed about the bike from a ride point of view that I mentioned just now, is that slow speed on this is a bit of work. You've got to do some feathering of the clutch. It's, uh, it's a little bit jerky at slow speed. There are no riding modes on this. You can't switch it into rain mode and calm it down. You get what you're given. And again, it's old school, so that might appeal to you. Doesn't appeal to me, I'm afraid. Right, you may notice that I've come out on a slightly different route to the one that I normally do. I was planning on coming out on a longer ride on the Norton today. It's such a beautiful day. And I've been so looking forward to riding this bike. And it's, again, as I mentioned at the start, such a privilege to be riding this given so few vloggers have had the opportunity to do so. That fact is not missed on me, so thank you Norton for lending me the bike. But, I have to say, it's not the bike that I hoped it would be. Other reviews I've read about the bike, you know, sung its praises, and maybe, I, maybe I'm missing the point somewhere, I don't know. I would put it down to one of those kind of, let me call it a more money than sense bike. I don't mean to be rude by that, but if you're somebody that's uh, wealthy, and you love your motorcycles, you love your motorcycle heritage, you've got a collection of bikes, and you've got a big uh, hangar storing your vehicles, then yeah, definitely get one of these to add to it. But if you're somebody more normal, <laughs> that can afford one, maybe two bikes, and you want to get a bike that's just a fun machine that's got that retro vibe, then uh, I couldn't recommend that you splash out 18 grand on the Norton Commando 961, I'm afraid. Alright, so to summarise then, as we get to yet another set of traffic lights. The likes on this bike, I love the way it looks, I love the heritage, I love the sound, I love the high quality parts. What I don't like, is how it all hangs together. I don't like the vibes through the seat. I don't like the parts of it that feel a bit cheap. There's something around the, the clocks and the yoke and the switch gear that just doesn't feel quite right. I don't like the finish on the wheels that looks like it's tarnishing already. You now these haven't been around for long. We don't know what the longevity is going to be like or indeed the reliability. I've got no reason to think it's not going to be good other than what I saw on the wheels on this one. But reliability wise, who knows what they're going to be like. Let's hope they're good. Anyway, so there we go. It's a thumbs down for, for me for the Norton. Probably means I'll never be riding a Norton again. <laughs> so sorry about that. But uh, there we go. Nonetheless, hope you found the review of interest. It's the first time you've been to my channel. Do consider hitting that uh, subscribe button. It'd be great to have you along. I don't just do bike reviews here on the channel, but I try and do all sorts of things to keep the channel with a bit of variety. Trips and tours at home and abroad. Monthly bike news. Bits and pieces about how to look after your bike. You name it, I try and cover it here on the Mission to Fly. It'd be great to have along next time. That's it for now. Look forward to speaking to you again soon. Until then, this has been the Mist and Fly. Cheerio. Something I forgot to mention on the review was the switch gear. I find a little bit trumpery again for a premium motorcycle. Look at this start-stop arrangement. It just sort of wiggles around under your under your finger. It just doesn't feel like a premium one. It should feel. It takes a bit of starting as well. God, I'm a whinger. I'm gutted that I haven't given this a glowing review. I really am. And really surprised as well. I thought I was going to absolutely love the bike. There's just too much wrong with it. I don't understand what's happened. You know, the manufacturing processes have been improved. The bike has been improved by any measure. But uh, it's just not as nice to ride as that Commando I rode before. When I rode Henry Cole's 961 Street, I don't remember thinking it had terrible vibes. I don't remember thinking the switch gear was trumpery. Or that the side stand was a bit naff. 
thought the mirrors vibrated. It's just really disappointing. 